Sandwich between these pieces of cardboard is something very precious to me. Prince, baby! 21 of them for my upcoming show. I picked them up at Pro Photo Connection the other day. I got to see them when I was there. Oh, man, they are so freaking nice! You know, I like to razz the guys at Pro Photo Connection now and then, but Lance, the uh, print technician there, he's a real pro. He freaking nailed it on these prints, and I am so happy with them. So I have 21 of the 25 they're gonna be printing for me. We need to reprint three of them because there were some defects in the ink, and then the last one is a C-type print that it still has to go off to uh, mounting and lamination. So I have the majority of them here, and we're gonna break them open in just a minute, start prepping them for framing. But I wanna first talk a little more about why I'm doing a mixture of C-type prints and pigment prints in this show. I'm not gonna do a full rehash on the difference between these types of prints and what the pros and cons are. I'll put a link right here for a video I did where I went pretty in depth on the uh, differences between these types of prints. Why am I doing a mixture? Well, because C-type prints don't have to be protected behind glass or plexi, and these do, that means I can end up with two different framing styles. Both of which I love, but both of which have their upsides and downsides. With C-Type, I can mount them on gator board, put a luster lamination over the top to take the gloss out of it, wrap it in a float frame, and I get this nice, clean, modern look that results in a piece that's actually pretty lightweight, uh, which is just a nice benefit because it makes it a lot easier to ship not having glass in there. Pigment prints, on the other hand, because they have to be protected behind glass or plexi, I choose to do a floating print style in a shadow box frame uh, behind anti-reflective glass. Also a beautiful look, but it's a much heavier piece, very difficult to ship uh, because you often have to switch out the glass for plexi um, unless you want to risk shipping a glass piece. And I like the look of both framing styles. But I found in doing my mock-ups that some images look great on that framing style, some don't. Uh, for some reason, a few of the pictures just didn't look right. It's like they needed that white border around it to really complete the piece. So I've opted to do 25 of the 29 pieces as a pigment print behind uh, anti-reflective glass. Four will be C-type prints like this, and I think that's a good mixture. Now, whenever I talk about doing C-type prints, it seems there's always somebody who feels obligated to point out that, well, C-type prints, because of the reduced longevity, they're really not like professional quality fine art gallery prints. You should really be doing pigment prints in a gap. You know, try and take me down a peg, uh, which is fine. But um, I found something online recently that kind of speaks to that that I think you all might find interesting. Uh, I came across this article that was talking about an Andreas Gursky exhibit at the Gagosian Gallery in New York. Uh, this was in 2016. And uh, Andreas Gursky is one of my favorite photographers of all time, very high-end fine art photographer. And the Gagosian Gallery is about as high-end as it gets. Just to give you an idea, the works in this show are priced between 35,000 and 900,000 euros. Sorry, Americans, we'll get to cash uh, US dollars in just a minute. While some Gursky prints in large editions can be found for under $10,000, that's an entry-level print, kid, $10,000. Uh, most start at roughly $50,000 and work their way up to over $1 million with a handful bumping into the $2 million and $3 million range. So keep those numbers in mind as I read this next part to you. The works on view are a mix of 11 inkjet prints and 9 C prints. So of the 20 photographs on display at this exhibit, Nine of them are C-type prints, almost half. So my feeling is if C-type prints are good enough for Andreas Gursky and the Gagosian Gallery, I think they're good enough for old Nikki C, budding photographer out of Orange County, doing his first exhibit. So um, on the pigment prints, I had an option for several different papers. I chose photo rag, but at Pro Photo Connection, I made sure to flip through the sample booklet because there are other options like Barita, uh, there's Museum Etch, there's Metallic, which I tried and didn't like, uh, so we didn't do that. There's Bamboo, there's all sorts of papers. And I settled on Photo Rag because a lot of the other papers are gloss finish, and I just don't like gloss prints because the reflections often hide the image, um, can be really distracting. And then some of the other papers that maybe aren't gloss finish might have a warmer, 
white base to it or a slightly darker base to it. And that can really throw off color balance and throw off uh, shadow and highlight rendition on a print. So photo rag to me is perfect because it's a bright white, neutrally colored, smooth matte finish paper. Um, and that's going to render the images as uh, true to what I envision as possible without distracting reflections. Now I was running some test prints and I just kind of want to explain what I was trying to figure out with these test prints. So if you watch my channel, you know that uh, I often like to get a proof print before I make any large framed piece to make sure the colors and tones are coming out how I want. But I wasn't about to do a proof print on 25 prints. So what I tried to do was just work out the kinks on a few and then trust that the rest of them are going to require the same treatment to get the results I'm expecting. And what I found um, was on all of my prints, the shadows were coming out darker than I expected based on what I saw on my screen. I have calibrated monitors, they have calibrated printers. It's not an issue of calibration. It's just that when you're taking something from a backlit digital image to a reflected ink on paper image, things like that are gonna happen. Uh, shadows will look a little bit darker because they're not backlit. So I needed to remedy that. Also, by the way, the highlights were a little hot. These are minuscule things, by the way. I'm just hypersensitive to, sensitive to them now. So I needed to figure out how to adjust my images to handle the loss of shadow detail and to knock down the highlights a bit. So I ran this test print where I broke up the image into four sections, starting with the original at the bottom and then progressively lightening the shadows in Photoshop. And then I brought this back and I compared it to my monitor and just kind of looked, okay, which one has about the right amount of shadow detail to what I was expecting uh, on my screen? And I found that raising the shadows just a little bit, just the 4% was, uh, was all, it, all I needed. So then I ran some more test prints with a uh, curves adjustment applied where I brought the shadows up a hair and knocked down the highlights just a bit. Found out that it got me almost there, almost perfect. So then I tweaked the curves just a little bit, brought the shadows up a tiny bit more, knocked the highlights, you know, just kind of tweaking things back and forth until I felt like what I was seeing on the screen was gonna come out on the print uh, more or less. I also found that the prints looked a little lower in saturation. So I tried adding some color in Photoshop and I just ran these test prints until I figured out that, okay, if I apply this exact tone curve and this exact adjustment to the saturation on every image, they'll come out perfectly on the print. And so now what I do is when I get the files all ready to go for Pro Photo Connection, I resize them, I sharpen them. The last step is I apply that curves preset and that saturation preset to uh, bring up the shadows, knock down the highlights and boost the color just a bit to cancel out what the printer is gonna be taking away from what I'm seeing on my monitor. And it's working great. All of the images have the right amount of shadow detail, the highlights aren't too hot, and the colors are looking very accurate to what I'm seeing. The only tricky part to that, by the way, is when I apply that curves adjustment and that saturation adjustment, the image suddenly looks shitty on my screen. Of course it does, because that's not how I adjusted it. The shadows look too light and the highlights are knocked down too much. It's a little too saturated. But I'm trusting that when it gets transferred to paper, it's going to uh, take away the stuff I don't like so that it ends up looking exactly like what I want it to look like on the original file. So enough yapping. Let's break these open and uh, start getting them ready for the framer. But I'm going to need some PPE, some print protective equipment. <laughs> going to need some white cotton gloves to keep my grimy ass hands off these bad boys. And I decided to wear a face covering because it's making me look like a bandit. Actually, it's more the accidental drool and beard dandruff because I'm gross. Now, these pigment prints ain't exactly Fabergé eggs, but photo rag paper is very soft, which makes it quite susceptible to getting dented and scratched. Just picture one little grain of dirt getting caught between these stacked prints. It'll embed into its skin like a fat guy stepping on a Lego. Also, any print that has a lot of ink on it, think dark images with a lot of black, 
can get a chalky scrape on it really easily. So I make sure to move slowly and deliberately and keep my space organized. The counter and rolling cart would be my staging areas, while the desk would be my workstation. The primary order of business here is to sign and number the prints. All of them are limited editions, but only the ones that will have a white border in the final display get signed and numbered using a number two pencil. Now after all the planning and scanning and tweaking, it sure felt good to see these prints up close. It's so damn rewarding to see my images in this way. Big, real, tangible, so much better than just seeing it on a screen. For all the images I shot on peel apart film and for the little 7x7s, I don't want a white border on the final print, but it's good to have a little bit of border for the framer because when it comes to mounting it, that'll give him something to cut off rather than eating into the image an eighth of an inch or whatever. So I went ahead and added a note to each one of those prints indicating that I wanted the border cut off in the final piece. By the way, just a side note here. I really like how these Polaroids came out. I won't be heartbroken if I have to find a place for these at my home. But I think my favorite print of the whole bunch, the one that's going to be most difficult to part with, is a 20 by 25 inch print from a 4 by 5 negative of a gnarly bent train car. It's one of my favorite images anyway, but seeing it in print, ooh buddy, it is something else. I just love studying all the intricate details and textures of this thing. This, of course, is one of the images I used to dial in my shadow and highlight adjustments. You may be able to see that I have better shadow detail in the final print. And I can't stress this enough. I am using calibrated monitors, and I am using the recommended color profiles. You're still dealing with two different mediums, a backlit screen versus ink on paper. And so you may get 98% of the way there, but certain things can get lost in translation even when you're doing everything right. This little set of last minute tonal and color adjustments just helps me make up that 2%. Last but not least was the big boys, the three and a half footers. So, with six prints signed and numbered and 15 marked for border deletes, these puppies are ready for framing. Now that I'm thinking about it, this is the last time I'll see them before they get sealed up behind glass forever. Oh, oh God, don't look at me. Okay, that is a relief to have that done. Handling such delicate prints like this that means so much to me is a little nerve wracking at times. I just want to get them to the framer as soon as possible so that I can't screw them up. Uh, so we're going to wait for the last four prints and then we'll get them off to my framer. All right, I am on my way to the framer said I was going to wait for the last four prints before I went over there, but uh, there's two still MIA. One of them is the C-type print. I got it back. It looks good and it was mounted, but they forgot the lamination. So I had to bring it back to get laminated. I'm actually going to pick that up on the way home from the framer today and just bring it back another day. Uh, and then the last print is giving me some trouble. It's the Ice Shack print. And we've been getting some real faint banding in the sky and uh, the lab troubleshooted the printer to make sure it wasn't the heads and anything like that couldn't find any issues there so i think i overdid it on the sharpening so it's actually sharpening the grain a little too much in the sky and it's starting to kind of just create some artifacts so i completely reprocessed it um, much lighter on the sharpening at least in the sky portion i brushed in some heavier sharpening in the detail areas but we're gonna try that one and hopefully the banding is gone and assuming it is then uh, that'll be the last print so i'll bring those last two whenever i get them now along with all my prints i am bringing something else to my framer an instruction pack uh, or reference sheets whatever you want to call them and um, this basically just lays out uh, every piece what frame size i want uh, what matting width I want and then any special instructions like whether or not to cut off the border just so that my uh, framer has everything I want written down. I know it's a bit much. If I ever saw a psychiatrist I'm sure I'd be diagnosed with something but like I said communication is key. I want to make sure that I don't miss anything and the framer doesn't miss anything and uh, if something does go wrong 
we know whose fault it was. I'm confident nothing will go wrong. So next time I see you, we're going to be looking at some big, beautiful framed prints, baby. Oh, that's going to be a good day.